to your upper jaw forceps and on my right side these are the lower jaw or mandibular forceps and these three are milk tooth forceps that are commonly used for kids teeth extraction so i'll show you the basic part of a tooth forceps this part is known as the handle so basically two handles are there and this is the hinge joint and these two are the beaks so there are two beaks it looks like a beak of a bird so these two beaks and this hinge joint and the two handles for every forceps so the basic difference between the lower jaw or mandibular forceps and the upper jaw forceps is the angulation between the hinge joint and the beaks so you can clearly see the hinge joint and the beaks are almost at a straight angle and here it is at perpendicular angle so a 90 degree angulation you can see on the lower jaw forceps so that is the basic difference between upper and lower jaw forceps you can see all the forceps are at 90 degree the hinge and the beaks so here you can see it is on a straight line there is not much angulation so it is for the ease of access so you can easily do the upper tooth extraction like this and the lower tooth extraction like this so it is for the ease of accessibility so now i will be showing you each one so this is the forceps which we commonly use for the upper anterior tooth extraction so you can see the beaks over here so it is not very uh, close each other a slight gap is there so it is used for upper central incisor lateral incisor and even for canines so you can hold it firmly and do the extraction of upper anterior teeth this is a premolar forceps so you can see there is no uh, right and left premolar forceps this is a common forceps so the serrations you can see it is uh, almost same on both the beaks for the premolar it is there is a concavity on the handle and it is going convex towards the beak so it is for the grip of the forceps so it is commonly used for premolar uh, can use it for both the right and left premolar extraction so the next forceps it is a molar forceps so you can see the beaks over here so there is a beak like structure on the right side and there is a flat surface on the left side so always keep in mind that the beak to cheek principle so this beak is always going the cheek side so we hold it like this so if beak is on the left side it is for the right molar tooth so the next forceps we hold it like this we always keep the concavity towards the palm so beak is coming on the right side so it is for the left molar tooth so it comes always in pair so you have the right and left combination of the molar forceps so similarly there is one more forceps that is known as cow horn forceps so if you have a destroyed tooth or very minimal tooth structure is remaining so this cow horn forceps can be used the problem is it has to be engaged very apically towards the root so again this beak you can see you hold the concavity towards the palm and if beak is coming on the right side this is for left molar tooth similarly this tooth the beak is coming on the left side so it is used for right molar tooth that is for grossly decayed tooth so you have to hold it like this the concavity sh should be towards the palm then you can see the beak whether it is coming on left side or right side 
so one more forceps this is commonly it, it has an uh, particular angulation so it is commonly used for third molar forceps that is third molar tooth extraction so you can see the uh, beaks are almost same you can use it for uh, right and left there is no uh, pair here only for molar forceps and molar cow horn forceps there is right and left pairs so next there is one more forceps that is root forceps you, you can see it the beaks are almost touching none of the other forceps the beaks are not touching so if the beaks are touching it is always used for root forceps always to uh, remove the root tips so this is a upper root forceps